was walking down the street, sure that someone was following her. She didn't dare look behind, as she would rather just walk on and hopefully get to somewhere where there were people around, other than turn around and have someone attack her. It was getting dark, and she saw a train station across the road, so she walked across to it. When she got into the station, thankfully there were other people in the platform, but strangely, she didn't feel any bit safer. She thought about getting on a train, but decided to just wait by a group of people first, to gather herself. She assumed it was just her paranoia, but there was something bothering her that she didn't know what it was. People were acting strange, and she had noticed there were police around. She had wondered why there was no train, as she was standing there for a few minutes now. There were lots of people looking down in the track, across a tape that said police line, do not cross. She didn't realize sooner, because she seemed to be in a daze, wondering why she was feeling so strange. She wondered what all the people were looking at, and when she walked over and looked down, she screamed with horror as she looked down at herself, dead on the train line. She was screaming and screaming, but no one seemed to take any notice of her. She had then noticed someone had made eye contact with her, and they seemed to notice her. They walked over to her and said, Did you just realize you're like me, one of the dead? She spoke on. Don't worry, it gets better. I watch the news to see where there are local deaths. That way at least you can talk to someone. Sharon froze, taking in the words that the girl was telling her, realizing she was dead. Nobody is allowed to cry, and it's a hard thing to keep up to not ever cry while living in an area full of horrid and cold people. My parents are always shouting at us to never cry, and every house has a swimming pool, and we all live next to rivers and canals. When my eldest brother started crying, my parents took his eyes out so that he could never ever cry again. And when my second eldest brother started to cry, my parents took his eyes out as well, and also the rest of his face. If we were on the verge of crying, we then needed to jump into the swimming pool, or to the next nearest river or canal. It's a horrible moment when you find yourself on the verge of tears, because someone has done something to you, or a tragic event has happened, which just makes you emotional. When I am on the verge of tears, I just jump into a swimming pool, or I go and find the next nearest river or canal. I have nearly drowned many times, but at least I have never cried. This is why everyone in my area has a swimming pool and lives next to rivers or canals. You cannot cry underwater. I once helped a friend to never cry by pushing him into the canal, where he unfortunately drowned. His parents understood why I did this to their son, as he was on the verge of crying. And when I kept asking him whether he was okay, it just pushed him nearer to crying. Then one day, I found a cabin in some abandoned forest, and inside this cabin, silence and privacy was present. I was able to cry without anyone knowing or seeing me. I passed this secret on to four of my friends, and we each took turns going into this cabin to cry on our own. It was amazing. 
We had a timetable of whose turn it was to cry inside the cabin, but one day a terrible event had come upon us when the town economy had completely gone. This destroyed the order of the timetable because all five of us desperately needed to go inside the cabin so that we could cry about it on our own. None of us dared to go inside the cabin together and to see each other cry because that would be an abomination to see each other cry. So I took my gun out and shot my four friends and I went inside the cabin where I cried on my own about the terrible event of the economy and my four dead friends. So everything with the cabin worked out in the end. There is a Japanese urban legend called the Cowhead Story. The name might sound kind of strange or even funny, but the urban legend has a very sinister background story. The most sinister thing about the story is that the story is so scary and so haunted that no one can ever tell it without dying. The legend talks about the story, which is basically a group of students, one by one, that notice that their teacher is becoming more and more involved in the story and living it. After a while, the students are screaming for him to stop. The worst thing is, he can't. A while later, police find the bus in a ditch which is all of the passengers foaming at the mouth, and legend has it they were in some sort of trance. The police shook them awake, and when the police asked them what happened, no one could remember how they ended up there. The cowhead story has no recollection of it. Some theories might pop up every so often but maybe there are no solid conclusions because of the one thing that might stop people from telling the story and that is the story is so scary and so haunted that no one can ever tell it without dying. I didn't want to say this and I'm not using my face just in case. I might get haunted by whatever legend it is, but when I first told the story of it, there was some weird kind of old video popped up when I was animating it as if mocking me. It was my voice speaking, saying, you won't be able to put this on, but I will put it on YouTube for you. I was wondering what it is, and what it was. It kind of creeped me out, it was almost as if it happened because I was telling you the story I felt like, and I still feel like, even after me deleting it, that I am haunted now. What? <laughs>
Hello, my name is Martin. It was a sunny day in June. Me and my friends were visiting a local park where there was a very big house and a beautiful garden. The house was open up for visitors to look around and there was a shop and even a restaurant. I am a huge fan of mazes but was never in one in real life. I just did them in books and comics or wherever I came across one. The main reason I wanted to visit this park house was because I knew there was a maze there. When me and my friends arrived at the maze, I was so excited, but I felt that excitement drain away when my friends said they weren't going in because they heard a story that one time a boy or age went in there and was never seen again. I told them that it was just a silly urban legend that wasn't true, but they were adamant they weren't going in. I could see the fear in their eyes, and I couldn't understand why. I told them, okay, if you want to spoil the party, that's okay, but I'm going in and enjoying the maze. Besides, if anyone was going missing in there, don't you think we would have heard of a lot more people going missing? I walked in and was amazed at how high the ditches were. I could feel the excitement overcome me. I felt that my friends were missing out so much, but suddenly after a half an hour walking around there, I felt for the first time a pang of fear, and a few minutes after that, I wish I hadn't gone in. I shouted out loud to my friends, but all I could hear was the echo of my voice fill the air. I suddenly got the weirdest feeling someone was watching me. I panicked thinking it was the boy who vanished, who my friends were telling me about. I walked around and around and around, I had enough of the maze now, I wanted to get to the exit to get out of it. Suddenly I heard some shouting, and to my relief I realized it was my friend Sarah. When I got out of the maze, I acted like I wasn't afraid and said, that maze is so cool. I was walking around for hours, it seemed like, and I genuinely couldn't find my way out. They must have designed this maze so well. That night I was in my room, but that was when the weirdest thing had happened. I walked out of my room, and when I walked into, which should have been my hall, I was in my room again. I suddenly saw a door in another direction, and once again when I entered it, I was in my room. This kept happening over and over and over. I could not make any sense of it, because I could look back and see my room, and turn around and look in the door and see my room again. I was panicking, thinking of the maze, knowing what was happening to me in there is happening to me right now in my own bedroom. Suddenly I fell over something when I was going through the door. It was a book. I picked it up and the title read The Maze. I opened it up and read the first page and a shiver ran up my spine. The publishing date was 2020 and the year at the time was 2010. I looked at the writer's name, and it was my best friend Sarah. Then I read, Ten years ago, my friend entered a maze that me and my friend warned him about, and he never was seen again. We had warned him of exactly the same thing happening another boy years ago, who we cannot find out who it is. I stopped reading, then jumped when I heard a voice behind me. I turned around. My dad was staring right in front of me and said, Son, don't be afraid. That maze gave you a secret magic that will make up for any friends you may never have seen again. You will understand as time goes on. I know, trust me, I was that other boy that went missing.
Hi, this is Kate Valentine. I'm responding about the request you put on the police auction materials. I bought a few kids' books from that auction. Actually, a whole crate of them. At the time, I didn't look at them. I just put them on the bargain shelf in order of the author's names. I had never heard of the author or the book title, so I gave them all orange stickers, which meant 50 cents each. One day, it was particularly dead, so... I paged through them, and I noticed this one with very simple, minimalistic drawings called Dave's Days. There was no cohesive story. Unlike other children's books that use each page as a part of a lesson, here there was none of that. One page was the Dave character sitting at a kitchen table with a mug in front of him. He was the kind of stick figure you see on bathroom doors. Dave's kitchen was written in block letters above him. The whole book was like that. Just Dave, sitting alone in one setting or another. The park, the library. I put the book away and looked through the others and found another one in the Dave series. This one was called Dave and His Friends. The cover was Dave outside his house, like the first, but next to him stood a little girl with a blonde ponytail. Two boys and a girl, all brown-haired with freckles, looked out from the window inside the house. This book was all about Dave and these kids doing things together and going places like to the park and getting ice cream. Every time Dave did something nice for them, they'd say, Dave is my, Dave friend. Is my friend. But since no one has a mouth, and therefore no one is smiling, it only makes the whole thing odd, like when you read a happy text message without an exclamation mark. I put the book away. Later that night, I decided to Google the titles of the books. When I got nothing, I just Googled the things in the book, and eventually I Googled the phrase, Dave is my friend. An article came up. It was about a girl named Jennifer Holland who had gone missing sometime earlier and about how her parents hadn't given up hope. It also alluded to police being suspicious of them as the circumstances of her disappearance were strange. They said they woke up to find their front door open and Jennifer gone. Two things really struck me from the article. The first was that the last name Holland seemed significant. I couldn't remember why until I went back to the Dave books and saw that Dave lived in Holland Town. The second thing, I'll get to that in a sec. After hours of searching for more information, I stumbled across a forum. I don't remember where, maybe on Reddit, but one subject said, Has anyone read Dave and the Others? It was a guy with the handle Oregon Ollie who had found an eerily similar book. The post was two years old. Later, I searched for Oregon Ollie, but his account was inactive. When he googled the book, he didn't find anything either. But, like me, he started googling everything in the book and found a news story, just like I had. Three siblings had been found dead at Chippewyan Lake in Canada. They lay on the shore, holding hands. Their last name was Robin. They died from exposure. Mr. and Mrs. Robin woke up in the middle of the night by a cold wind the night their kids went missing. The door had been left wide open. It was January. The police found a note at the Robin home left by the kids, but the article said the investigators would not release the contents to the public. Oregon Ollie said that, in his book, there were three red robins that would fly over Dave's head when he got sad. The book was mostly a man, walking the city sidewalks at night, or sitting at a park bench alone with the stars over him. Whenever Dave seemed sad, the robins would come and fly over his head, and he would just look up and watch. The second thing that I mentioned earlier that struck me in the first article I read was that Jennifer Holland had drawn a picture before she went missing. It was of a stick figure man and herself, 
Her parents didn't know what it was. She had written, Dave is my friend on it. I don't have the books anymore. I went back through them after reading Oregon Ollie's account, and seeing those three kids in the window of Dave's house freaked me out, so I threw them away. I still think about it, though. Sometimes I wish I kept them, but the thought of having them near me gives me the chills. I wasn't going to mention this, but after I read the Reddit account, I wrote my own post about it. No one ever picked up on it, but right after that, I started getting phone calls. When I answered, I would hear some electrical buzzing, but that was it. First, the calls were just at my house, but then I got them on my cell and even at work. Slowly, it died down, but I still get them from time to time. The last thought that crosses my mind when I lock my doors at night is, I wonder if it's Dave calling me. And I wonder if he's there somewhere, watching my house when I go to bed. Sometimes I move my bureau in front of the door just to be safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>